I'm Dr. Anthony Harper here in, in Vilnius, Lithuania. Very special uh, event here to honor uh, the, the Jewish people here that are buried uh, in the cemetery here. And I'm uh, tonight with uh, the attorney uh, in this case. Uh, and uh, say your name and uh, with your position and, your, and how you've been involved uh, with the case with the cemetery. I'm Evelina and I represent my client in the court and this case is regarding renovation of a sports palace which is built in the heart of old Jewish cemetery here in Vilnius. Okay, so how long has this court case, uh, or how long has this been, issue has been brought up uh, to the court to this address? It's almost a year when we started getting all the documentation. We have a lot of documents proving that a lot of bones are still in this construction, and according to the plan, they want to make the entrance to this building through the cemetery. It means when people are going to this concert, they are going through the bones, going through the cemetery. Mm -hmm. We do, the, the big issue, uh, from what I understand, is the desecration of, of the cemetery. Specifically, we think about a sewer line, uh, uh, the sewer that would be going through this area. Uh, how that offensive that would be. Uh, what, what the point was made out uh, earlier uh, in the presentation today at the cemetery, that if this was some other type of religious cemetery, maybe even a cemetery where Muhammad was buried, or maybe even disciples of, of Muhammad, they wouldn't dare to move those graves or desecrate that area, but yet uh, people have desecrated this cemetery, the Jewish cemetery. Of course, it's very sensitive topic. You have to know that it's all Jewish cemetery and is even all known Jewish people who are buried here. So mm -hmm. now we know that this place is now abundant. People are going with the dogs to walk dogs, to play ball mm -hmm. here. And a lot of Lithuanians, they just doesn't know it was a cemetery. The problem is our society are not aware of the problems. And according to the plans, our government are going to invest to renovate this building and to use for the conferences and concerts, it means have da dancing and meeting on the bones. Yeah, so this is a, a very serious case that, that has been mentioned that it would affect uh, other religious cemeteries as well. Uh, the outcome of this case affects uh, religious freedoms issues worldwide, affects other religious cemeteries. Yes. And, and so what do you expect to be happening here in the near future as far as a possible court date very soon to address this issue? Or um, do you expect uh, with the outcry of this and people making complaints about this that the city council could change their mind easily and not have to go to court at all. Actually, when we submitted this case, it was only one plaintiff submitting these documents. Now we have a few hundred people wanting to join this uh, complaint and say mm -hmm. they are interested and they are supporting. We have uh, small Jewish communities in Lithuania which support our case. What do we believe and what do we expect? Actually, we expect that this case is going to be, of course, difficult. It's strong case, it's a difficult case, and it's a very big case. Uh, we don't know yet a court date. Of course, it's going to be through court proceedings, and we plan that if we lose this case here, we are going to European Court of Human Rights, so of course it's going to implement and have a lot of in international documents as well. Because of the importance of this as a human rights case, uh, in America, there's, there's the, they get a stay or something where a judge issues a stay so that nothing can be done uh, with something until it's heard in, in the court. Do you have something like that here in Lithuania where you just say, you know, because of this, uh, we're gonna, uh, there'll be a hold on any attempts by the city council to, uh, to make any construction plans until this is heard through the courts? Uh, actually, what we are doing here, there is still no agreement and there is still no permission to build something now here. Mm -hmm. What we did, we submit a, a preventive uh, complaint to the court asking to oh, okay. stop anything now. And uh -huh. now the court have to evaluate, is it human rights violation? Now here is there a plan because now we see that this project is real. It's not only about government talking about this project, but there are open calls so companies still can apply and decide to build something and to renovate this building. So now it was a preventive claim. Of course, if something really is trying to, to happen, for example, if they get agreement with concrete company, we are going to submit one more case as well to the court. Well, what, what can people do that want to get involved uh, in this situation? Uh, to uh, what, what can people do to, to help? Uh, 
in this. The main thing you can do is raise awareness. The problem is a lot of people don't know it's all cemetery. A lot of people don't know there are bones. So if you try and you try to speak about this to all people you know in Lithuania and other countries, for example, if you try to reach our government and to inform that maybe you never come to this conference center because it's on the cemetery, mm -hmm. it may change mind because now the purpose of this palace actually for people. So if the government understands that people are not going to come because they are aware what it is, I think it can change their mind. Mm -hmm. Well, there, I know there's more information on, on the internet. There are some great videos about the, the history yes. of Vilnius, and people can uh, see those videos just to look up uh, Vilnius Cemetery, uh, the Jewish Cemetery of Vilnius, Lithuania, and uh, learn more details. Uh, but um, there's a lot of challenging uh, issues you have to, to address it here. But is this, is this the first uh, public event like this? Uh, Regarding the, this, the cemetery? Yes, regarding this case and this problem is the first public event when we are trying to involve not only government but also society and to inform there is a problem and we want to speak about this. And what mm -hmm. I think is very important because here when we had an event uh, on the cemetery today, not only our plaintiff came and not only Jewish community which support us came, but mm -hmm. also representative from the government, from Turta Bankas, the company which are the owner of this building, they came and they said that they are open to uh, speak about this. So I think mm -hmm. it's a very good start. A very good start, okay. Yes. Well, uh, thank you for uh, you know, joining me and to share these concerns here and uh, we eagerly wait to find out what happens next. Of course. And people can, uh, of course, uh, you know, learn more uh, through the internet about the history of this uh, and, and who would they call uh, if they wanted to get more information. Uh, of course, the first uh, source, okay. uh, you have to search for uh, Old Jewish Cemetery in Vilnius Pyramont, or you can also find the European Foundation for Human Rights in Vilnius. We have all information, and we are willing to share er anyone who are willing to read about this. Okay, well, thank you. Thank and, you. and like I said, for more information, uh, go to the website, uh, just uh, type in the search for Vilnius and Jewish Cemetery, and you'll learn more about uh, the overall comprehensive history of what has been happening here in Vilnius, Lithuania. I'm Dr. Anthony Harbour here uh, in Vilnius, Lithuania. Very special uh, news event here. It's about uh, the Jewish cemetery in uh, Vilnius here. Very ancient uh, cemetery, very important, one of the uh, prominent, most prominent Jewish cemeteries in the world. And uh, uh, thank you for joining me, and maybe you can introduce yourself uh, to the listeners here, your, your name and your position, what you do. My name is uh, Dr. Andrus Kulikauskas. I'm a philosopher, mathematician, historian. Okay. And I've been concerned about, um, well, first of all, delighted by uh, Lithuanian Jewish history as part of Lithuanian history. Mm -hmm. And uh, f uh, for a small nation, we have concerns of what it means to be a nation state. Okay, um, so what, what is, I just, the, the main concern for a lot of people is about why is this Jewish cemetery so important? How does this impact uh, other uh, cemeteries? So i uh, just share with uh, the viewers here um, and, uh, you know, the, the importance of how, what to do in, in preserving this cemetery. So... In a world of nations, states, and many, many nations, uh -huh. it's important that there be some ground rules. And they include that we should want vibrant minorities, mm -hmm. and we should uh, want a healthy diaspora. Mm -hmm. And the Jewish minority is especially important because of uh, the belief of devout Jews mm -hmm. that their cemeteries are holy. It's not even so much the bodies, but it's the place where the bodies are. And they're so holy that they will never forget those cemeteries. They may uh, be dashed into different lands, but they will always care about this cemetery. So it is a curse and a great insensitivity not to appreciate that uh, this is not a place to uh, forget and to remove the bodies from and to repurpose and to do what you want for economical purposes. This is something that gives us pause, mm -hmm. that uh, we don't want disharmony, we want harmony between nations. And so, um, 
to say what the Soviets did, being atheists, being enemies of God, to destroy intentionally this cemetery, is not what Lithuanians are responsible for. But we are responsible not to validate that, not mm -hmm. to sanctify that. It would be a horrible crime, it would be a horrible curse to put that in our name. Mm -hmm. So we want to see what our Grand Duchy uh, rulers saw, that across the river is the cemetery of famous Lithuanian Jews and famous rabbis, including the Gaon of Vilnius, and that we don't want to see what the Soviet Communist Party secretary saw, this kind of Soviet monstrosity. We don't mm -hmm. want to try to keep that heritage alive. This is a type of mm -hmm. issue. People need to be educated and people need to uh, care about each other and we need to be one common people. So uh, we need uh, this type of issue to bring Lithuanians and Jews together and care about this. Okay, uh, if you were able to talk uh, to President Trump, if you mm -hmm. to share that concern, he's he's been uh, you know touted and, and very appreciated here uh, in, in support of Israel. So, what would your a brief message to President Trump be about this cemetery? I would say there are many Lithuanian Americans and many Lithuanian uh, American Jews in in the United States, and. We depend on NATO and NATO values to defend mm -hmm. us and there may be uh, Lithuanian American Jews who will risk their lives for Lithuania and we cannot have this type of uh, discord uh, hurt us mm -hmm. in that type of grave situation. We need to sort things out now. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing this. Is very, I know, important concerns uh, for a lot of people and how this affects uh, other religious cemeteries as well. So uh, we'll wait to see what happens next. Of course, people can get involved. Uh, they can learn more about the cemetery through, uh, through the website's great videos. And uh, a very unique time here uh, for the Jewish people in memory uh, here at the cemetery in Vilnius, Lithuania. I'm Dr. Anthony Harper here in Vilnius, Lithuania. This is a, a very special time uh, for so many uh, Jewish people. And, and in here about uh, a special event and honoring uh, Jews buried in a cemetery. And uh, here in Vilnius, it's a very uh, well-known Jewish cemetery. And um, I thank you for joining me. And, and, and what is your name and, and, and your position? And why are you interested uh, in preserving this cemetery? That's a good question. My name is Elchanan Baron. My name, uh, my father's name originally was Baranovich, okay. which is a name from the area not far from from here. This is the kind of uh, area where that kind of name comes from. And uh, now my name is Baron. My father shortened it. Uh, I'm. Uh, our family has roots on all sides from Lithuanian uh, Jewry, <laughs> and as the professor mentioned previously, a, a, a Jew that comes from Lithuania considers himself a Litvak. Ah. He remains a Lithuanian. And that's special that doesn't, in most countries it doesn't exist. It, it doesn't exist. The Jews go away and they consider themselves Jews. They, they, they don't consider themselves specially culturally affiliated with the country where they were. So we are, we are Litvaks. Everybody knows that my family is Litvaks. Unfortunately, at the time of the Holocaust, 97% of Jewry uh, was decimated. There's no, it's unparalleled. There's no, the, the, there's no country in Europe that lost that high percentage of, 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 of Jews. So there aren't that many Litvaks. But the, the people who are, are proud of the Lithuanian heritage, the Lithuanian Jews were always considered a bit elite. Because the Lithuanian Jewry were always more intellectual, they were always studying more. They were always they were uh, whether it was Talmud or later even if it was in the Haskalah, they were studying other 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 fields. But Lithuanian Jews were always always studying and always considered like like elite in that way, and they're always proud of their Lithuanian heritage. So as far as the Shnipeshok Cemetery is concerned, first of all, anybody who knows anything about genealogy, every single Lithuanian Jew has 
his roots in that cemetery here next door. Mm-hmm. Because after 300 years, that, that cemetery is since around 1500. So all Lithuanian Jews have ancestors buried in that cemetery. So that's number one. So we all come from people who are lying there being, being ignored and, and even worse and desecrated. That's number one. Number two, because it was the primary, uh, actually originally was the only uh, Lithuania uh, Jewish cemetery in, in Vilna, in Vilnius for hundreds of years. So all the great rabbis, and Vilna was the place of the greatest rabbis, are buried there. People who we study their words every single day. I, for example, my mother passed away a few months ago, and I study for a few minutes in the morning at the Kotel at the Western Wall. I pray for, I, I pray every morning for my mother, that's the custom. And then after prayers, I study um, halakha. It's Jewish law for five minutes. And what do we study from? We study from a, a book called the Chaye Adam. Chaye Adam literally means the life of man. It's a book about how a person should behave, the life of man. And that Chaya Adam, that person, Chaya Adam, is buried here in the cemetery. We don't know where he is because his, his, his grave was, was desecrated. His gravestone, his tombstone was taken away. And we study his words every day. And the day I left Jerusalem to come here, or the day before, I studied his words, how he discusses how around the time of Rosh Hashanah, which is now coming up the Jewish New Year, one should go to, the, to, to a Jewish cemetery cemetery and pray on the graves of his ancestors before the, the holy, the high holidays. And he discusses there how one should pray. What is the correct way to pray? It's a short, short uh, law, two lines. How one should pray at, at, uh, at, at a cemetery. So this is, we live these people. These are not some people that we heard about that are in some history book. The people who are buried here in Schnippeshock are mentioned every single day by Jewish scholars. Every day Mm-hmm. Jewish scholars all over the world mention these people. These are people are alive to us. So whether or not there is my ancestor or not, these people are alive. And you come and you say, no, we want to we wanna build a convention center here. We want to make a park. We want to do it. Who, what are you doing? These are, this is my father, my grandfather. Mm-hmm. We, we're, these people are alive to us. So that's what brings a person like me to come and to come here and to participate in this protest. We, we will not allow this. We will not allow the Lithuanian uh, uh, people and government to ignore 500 years of Jewish history. It's, it's, it's unjust and uh, it's, it's just uh, not right. And I believe that the, all the people in the free world will understand that this is not the way to, you can't run a country uh, today, a modern country, and just trample the rights of, of people like that. Yeah, so, you know, you think about, uh, you know, a, a sewer, a, a sewer going through the cemetery, that, that is a bit so offensive. You think about the desecration, there's that's one really serious concern. We have a business park there. You have entertainment centers, maybe bars, and you have you have a sewer, you have bathrooms. And, it, and, it, what, and what about excuse me? What about digging up? What about the, and, the bulldozers people, to dig the up bulldozers. their bones and, and, and yeah. break the break very their serious. bodies? And this is this is a very serious so thing. What was your message to President Trump on this issue? I know that President Trump has been uh, you know uh, really appreciated here uh, in support of Israel, and uh, his name came up uh, earlier. At at the presentation at the cemetery. Would you message to President Trump on this matter? I, I would say, if, if I would speak to President Trump now, and I also have a tremendous respect for his his his, his the way he's he's treating uh, Israel and 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 the Jewish people and his his compassion and his his fairness. I, I would say, is this? I, I know that President Trump. I've heard him say more than once how he appreciates the heritage of the of the Jewish people. The Jewish people are a tiny nation, mm-hmm. but we have an important history. We have an important message, and we convey an important uh, an, an important message to humanity. And and to go and and desecrate uh, Jewish heritage, to trample Jewish heritage. Uh, there's there's uh, uh, six or seven million American Jews, and a, a very large number of them have ancestors lying here in this little tiny this few uh, few acres mm-hmm. of, of property, and and we just have to trample. Their, 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 their ancestors in that fashion, I think he would understand. President Trump always said, you have to do what's right. That's what he said when he moved the, the, the embassy. He says, I don't know what the whole world says and what the, my, my people came before me, he said and did. Mm-hmm. If it's right, that's what we do. And this is right. This is not right. Mm-hmm. This is not right to destroy an ancient cemetery
cemetery with tens of thousands of, of, of Jewish graves, among them prominent rabbis and scholars. It's not right. Okay. Well, I thank you for sharing. These are, I uh, know, very important issues, and it how has impacted what was said earlier. Other uh, other religious cemeteries as well. So please check out more on the internet. You can see videos of the Vilnius Jewish Cemetery in Vilnius, Lithuania. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to stay my opinion.